Hey friends, in this video we are going to study about RAPD which is Random Amplification of Polymorphic DNA. It's a dominant DNA marker. What are DNA markers? We have already studied in the previous video. They are the specific sequences of the DNA which are repeated two or more times and their variants are, there are, there are multi, multiple variants that are present in different individuals that can be detected. So they are used as a marker. Here, RAPD is a dominant marker which means that only one parent can transfer its marker to the first generation out of the two parents due to which the allelic variations cannot be detected. So, only one of the parent or the dominant character is expressed or the dominant marker is expressed while the other one is uh, not passed on to the uh, first generation. So, it's a kind of... Uh, uh, here we cannot detect allelic variations, right? So RAPD uh, is basically random amplification. Random means choosing any of the sequences of the DNA. We randomly choose any sequence of DNA and then we amplify that sequence. That's what it does mean. Randomly choosing DNA and amplifying the DNA of polymorphic DNA. Now what's the meaning of polymorphic DNA? It means that a particular sequence of DNA which has two or more uh, variants present in different individuals or in a population that is termed as polymorphic DNA. So here in a random amplification of uh, polymorphic DNA which is a dominant marker, here we collect the sample. Suppose we have just a few samples of uh, specific DNA which we, we have randomly chosen. We need to multiply the, uh, these samples and then we subject them to electrophoresis. So for multipli multiplication purposes, we use polymerase chain reaction which is PCR. So RAPD is a PCR based marker. While in the previous video we have studied RFLP which is a restriction fragment length polymorphism which is hybridization based technique. But this is not hybridization based, it's PCR based marker. Right, and the other difference is that it's a dominant marker while RFLP is a co-dominant co marker. So in RAPD, uh, we randomly amplify a polymorphic DNA. Here, we, the DNA markers which developed by amplifying random sequence of specific marker through the use of random primers. We use random primers in the PCR and through these primers and choosing a random sequence of specific marker we actually multiply them and then through electrophoresis we detect different bands. Here it's a type of PCR reaction but the segments of DNA that are amplified are random. So the segments of DNA which are amplified they are totally random and it's a kind of PCR reaction. Now we need to know what is PCR. PCR is basically polymerase chain reaction which is multiplying the DNA. So if we need to copy the DNA and we need to create multiple copies without the need of living system, we do not need cells over here to multiply the DNA through uh, simply replication process. Here we just simply want a direct replication of DNA without need of any cellular machinery. So for that we choose PCR. In PCR, we have a machine called as therm thermal cycler. So in thermal cycler, we have small tubes present in them. Uh, we also call them as PCR machine. And in these small tubes, we actually add some substances in order to uh, multiply or in order to uh, create a polymerization reaction of the DNA. So in order to create the copies of DNA, first of all, we need to choose that random sequence of DNA and put them in these tubes. Secondly, we need to add some of the stuff such as TAC polymerase. TAC polymerase is basically a DNA polymerase enzyme that helps in polymerization. Over here, TAC is heat stable. It's heat tolerant uh, enzyme and TAC means thermus aquaticus. And instead of TAC, we can even choose PTU polymerase and BSTE polymerase. So these are the options of polymerase. Uh, enzymes that can be used in the PCR machine. Other than TAC polymerase, we add primers and these primers are absolutely random primers. So we add short nucleotides 
we know primers can read from 5 prime to 3 prime direction only so we we add these short nucleotide sequence which is termed as primers and these primers are absolutely random primers and these primers provide starting point as well as they help to choose exact portion for amplification they help these primers help us to choose the exact position for amplification from where and which sequence of dna needs to be amplified this is chosen by these primers next thing that we need to add is of obviously DNA template which is a random DNA template uh, which needs to be amplified. Next we need to add uh, nucleotides which is DNTPs, deoxynucleotide triphosphates. These actually helps in the, they are added in the templates in order to multiply the number. Because DNTPs can only react and they can form a complementary strand with the help of primers. So tag polymerase primers and DNTPs they help in the uh, multiplication of this template right and other than that we need buffers and we know that we need to maintain an optimum or a particular pH of the sample or in this tube we need to maintain a particular t uh, pH because we know that uh, DNA, DNA is uh, pH sensitive so in order to maintain the pH we need we need to add some buffers as well so all these uh, ingredients or all these stuffs are added in the small tubes of PCR machine or we can say thermal cycler and in these tubes and with the help of all this stuff we actually polymerize, polymerize the DNA template and we create multiple copies of our sample now in this PCR chain reaction which is a polymerase chain reaction there are basically three major steps of PCR which is denaturation, annealing and extension. So denaturation, annealing, extension these are the three steps of PCR. So in uh, denaturation step we basically denature the DNA we convert the double stranded DNA into a single stranded DNA by raising the temperature of the machine up to 90 to 95 degrees Celsius. This is how we denature our double stranded DNA. Next step is annealing. Annealing means first of all we need uh, to heat up the DNA and then we uh, abruptly cool down the temperature. So this sudden heat, heating and cooling is actually called as annealing which is mainly used in metal industry. So this double stranded DNA undergoes annealing. Uh, sudden heat and cooling is done from 72 degrees Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius. After cooling we add primers so that they can bind to the target sequence. And if we know what is, how the replication process begins. So these primers when, add, when added to the complementary strand of the DNA they help in the polymerization reaction in order to create the copies since we have already got our single stranded dna so we uh, perform the step of annealing and the primers get attached to these uh, single stranded dna in order to create the copies now the next step is extension here in extension we require dntps which we have already added in the tubes these dntps are added for the further extension or polymerization using TAC polymerase. So first of all for extension we need to again rise the temperature from 55 to 72 degrees Celsius and then we use uh, uh, so that by 72 degrees Celsius is required over here so that TAC polymerase extend the primers synthesizing new DNA. So this is how from one DNA we get to 2 to 4, 4 to 8 like uh, 4 to 16 so this is how the number increases uh, one by one. So in the first cycle if we only undergo, if the thermal cycler machines only undergo one cycle it will produce two copies. If it further goes it will produce four copies and after that it will produce 16 copies. And so this is how it keeps on producing multiple copies and around 15 to 25 cycles are repeated in the thermal cycler or PCR machine. So this is how PCR is done and we actually amplify a random sequence of polymorphic DNA. So here we have this chart representing how RAPD is actually performed. First of all isolation of DNA is done, then they are subjected to PCR and after PCR uh, these uh, 30 to 30, 35 to 45 or maybe 15 to 25 cycles are run 
and after that the amplified product is separated by gel electrophoresis and the bands are actually detected by ethidium bromide which is a stain which is added in the bands in order to visualize them so this is how we actually uh, separate and detect the different bands of uh, dna through rapd so rapd is actually a dominant marker that helps in the uh, identification of a particular uh, DNA sequence and we can actually uh, use this in order to see the polymorphism of two different individuals. So this is how uh, we study RAPD which is a dominant marker and is based on PCR technique. So I hope that you like this video and if you did then please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment. Thank you.